In this video, we will discuss about patent ductus arteriosus. Before proceeding, it is highly recommended to watch the videos on atrial septal defect and ventricular septal defect. PDA is a persistent communication between the upper descending thoracic aorta and the pulmonary artery. It is due to failure of normal physiological closure of the fetal ductus arteriosus. In normal full term babies, PDA closure occurs in two stages. The first is the functional closure, it is completed by 10 to 15 hours after birth. It is due to smooth muscle contraction of ductus arteriosus. And it is also by approximation of intimal cushions. The second stage, that is anatomical closure is completed by 2 to 3 weeks. It is due to diffuse intimal fibrous proliferation. It causes permanent closure of the ductus, thus now it is called ligamentum arteriosum. The ductus closure and patency are mediated by many vasoactive agents. But the two important factors are, oxygen tension, and prostaglandins. Full-term babies are more sensitive to oxygen tension, a raise in PO2 after birth, causes ductal constriction and closure. Prostaglandins are more sensitive in preterm babies. It relaxes the ductus, thus the duct is kept patent. Nonsteroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, like indomethacin, inhibit the prostaglandin synthesis. Thus these drugs help in closure of the ductus, especially in the preterm infants. For the ease of understanding, let's learn PDA from this schematic diagram. For those who wants to learn more about the function of ductus arteriosus in the fetus, are recommended to watch the short video on fetal circulation. In PDA, there is left to right shunt across the ductus. This is due to high systemic vascular resistance, when compared to pulmonary vascular resistance. So there is increased blood flow through pulmonary artery. The increased blood flow then reaches, left atrium, left ventricle, and then pumped into the aorta. Thus with time there is enlargement of pulmonary artery, left atrium, left ventricle, and aorta. This pathophysiology is similar to VSD, but in VSD there is no aortic enlargement. Initially, there is pulmonary arterial hypertension due to increased pulmonary flow. This pulmonary arterial hypertension is reversible. As time progresses there is remodeling of pulmonary vascular bed for increased pulmonary blood flow. This increases the pulmonary vascular resistance. Pulmonary arterial hypertension due to increased PVR is usually irreversible. As the right ventricle pumps against increased pulmonary arterial pressure. There is right ventricular hypertrophy as the time progresses. Classification of PDA In echocardiography, PDA is classified according to its diameter. The diameter is measured at its narrowest point, before its entry into the pulmonary artery. Small PDA is less than 1.5 mm in size. Moderate PDA is between 1.5 to 3 mm in size. Large PDA is more than 3 mm in size. Angiographically, PDA can be classified according to its configuration and its size. Krichenko classified PDA according to its angiogram appearance. Type A is a conical PDA with well-defined aortic ampulla and constriction near the pulmonary artery end. Type B, is a window-like PDA, that is very short and wide. Type C, is a tubular PDA, without any constrictions. Type D, is a complex PDA, with multiple constrictions. Type E, is an elongated PDA, with remote constriction. The second classification by angiography is according to size. The size of the PDA is the smallest ductal diameter measured on lateral view. When the size of the PDA is less than 1.5 mm, and without murmur, it is called a silent PDA. With murmur, it is called very small PDA. Small PDA is 1.5 to 3 mm in size. 
Moderate PDA is 3 to 5 mm in size. Large PDA is more than 5 mm in size. Symptoms of PDA are similar to VSD. In large PDA, the pressure at aortic and pulmonary end are almost equal. As pulmonary vascular resistance falls after birth, left to right shunt increases. It causes congestive heart failure symptoms like fatigue during feeding, sweating of forehead, and failure to thrive. Increased pulmonary blood flow causes recurrent respiratory tract infection. In moderate sized PDA, the left to right shunt not only depend on the systemic and pulmonary vascular resistance, but it depends also on the ductus size. Congestive heart failure can occur in infancy, but due to compensatory left ventricular hypertrophy, the symptoms improves. The patients can remain asymptomatic till second decade of their life. After that they can develop exertional dyspnea and fatigue. Small PDA are usually asymptomatic. On physical examination. Babies with large to moderate sized PDA, will have hyperactive precordium. Apical impulse is displaced laterally, and it is of thrusting type. There is systolic thrill at the upper left sternal border. The peripheral pulse is bounding and jerky. This is due to the wide pulse pressure. Wide pulse pressure is due to high systolic pressure as left ventricular stroke volume is increased in PDA. Wide pulse pressure is also due to low diastolic pressure as blood from aorta runs off into pulmonary artery via the PDA. In neonates, the murmur is systolic with late systolic accentuation and minimal diastolic spill. There is also a mid-diastolic flow murmur, across the mitral valve. By 2 to 3 months of age, when the pulmonary vascular resistance decreases significantly. One can hear the classical continuous machinery murmur of PDA, at the left upper sternal border, as described by Gibson. The murmur starts after first heart sound, it continues throughout the second heart sound, and fades away gradually. The intensity of the murmur is maximum, at the second heart sound, or immediately after it. In small PDA, the pulse, precordium are usually normal. The systolic or continuous murmur is of less intensity. There is no flow murmur across mitral valve. ECG in PDA is similar to VSD. In small PDA, the ECG is usually normal. In moderate PDA, there is left ventricular hypertrophy. And there is left ventricular volume overload state, that is Q wave in V4, V5, and V6 leads. Also sometimes there is left atrial enlargement, that is seen as broad, bifid P wave in lead 2, and enlarged terminal negative portion of the P wave, in V1 lead. In large PDA, in addition to the above findings, there is cat's watchel phenomenon. That is tall biphasic RS complexes in the mid-precordial leads V2, V3, or V4, it denotes biventricular hypertrophy. Chest X-ray in PDA, is similar to VSD. In small PDA, the chest X-ray is usually normal. In moderate to large PDA, there is cardiomegaly. Left atrium is enlarged. Left ventricle is dilated, and it forms the apex. There is prominent pulmonary artery. With increased pulmonary vascular markings. These findings are similar to that of findings in VSD. In addition to above findings, in PDA there is ascending aortic dilatation. Echocardiography is diagnostic procedure of choice. PDA can be visualized in high parasternal view or in suprasternal view. If PDA is left untreated, complications can occur. This can be infective endarteritis, congestive heart failure, rupture of PDA, and development of Eisenmenger syndrome. In Eisenmenger syndrome, there is differential cyanosis. To prevent these complications, PDA has to be managed accordingly. In preterm babies, drugs like indomethacin, ibuprofen is used for pharmacological closure. 
in case of failed pharmacological closure, or when these drugs are contraindicated, surgical closure is indicated. In case of term babies, pharmacological closure of PDA is not useful. If the babies are symptomatic, medical therapy for congestive heart failure is initiated. If there is response to the medical therapy, PDA must be closed electively at 6 months of age. If baby is not responding to medical therapy, immediate PDA closure is performed. If the baby is asymptomatic, prophylactic closure of PDA is performed at 6 months of age. The closure of PDA can be done either by percutaneous technique by device closure, or by surgical closure. Even small PDA should be closed, due to high risk for endarteritis. The contraindication for PDA closure is Eisenmenger syndrome. Hope this video was useful. See you soon in the next video.